So uh, we we've been talking about. Like, first of all, I, I want to bring up the Eagles first of all because we're, it seems like this is a distant horizon for me that this season would start. But because I'm left with the you know a lack of football talk on a daily basis right now with this lull until we get we start the season. But but I still don't know what to expect. Well, I, I think you should expect a team that's a, a work in progress, a, a team that. We're going to see ups and downs because we have a young team in certain positions. The most important position, quarterback, we, we have a guy that's only started four games, you know, and really has played good in about half of those games. And so we, we should expect a bunch of roller coasters. We also should expect that towards the end of the season, we should see some progress. We should see a team that looks much better at the end of the season than they did at the beginning. That doesn't mean they're going to win games because it takes a, a certain thing about a football team to come together that to win football games, hard-fought football games, and you know it by the schedule, we're playing the NFC East at the end of the season. So, I mean, I, I think it's going to be tough for them to win games, but we should see some progress. And what else? We, we're, we're not going to win the Super Bowl this year. We understand that. But progress is exactly what we need to see for a young coaching staff and a young football team. What should I expect in game one? Because what I'm expecting is that the Atlanta Falcons with this veteran quarterback, a little more seasoned. Do, do, could I expect them to come out in game one with a new coaching staff, a new system, a quarterback really only four games under his belt to be firing on all cylinders? Like, Do you think they're ready for the game one challenge? I think it would be hard to believe that that's going to happen. We, we rarely ever see – Young quarterback, new coach, come out firing in game one. The one thing that I think they will have a little bit of an advantage is, you know, the, the there there's no game plan. There's no tape out there on what Nick Sirianni is going to do for four quarters as well as uh, Jonathan Gannon, what he's going to do for four quarters. And so there's no game tape to say, okay, uh, you know, they're going to do these things. We have to stop these things. The one thing, you know, again, and that, this is why that's an advantage because now – it may take Atlanta a little bit more, Matt Ryan, that, that, that football team, to adjust to what we're doing. So advantage to the Eagles. And if they never adjust, then, you know, we may mess around and win a football game if we're playing well. But, you know, if, if they adjust and, you know, we don't play up to expectations, then we're going to lose the football games, which, which kind of is what I expect. All right. So uh, let's look at what uh, possibly they could have in store for Atlanta. How, how do you think that they will play offensively with this quarterback? Because I'm trying to figure out whether, uh, you know, what kind of system they're going to utilize with him to, to, to come up with his best work. 60-40 run. I mean, I, I 60, expect, 40 run. 60-40 yeah. run. Run, 60 run. Yes. I, I, mm. I expect Miles Sanders to have a, a games where he's touching the ball 20 to 25 times, which he really should have been happening – in the last couple of years. But I think he touches the ball 25 times in the game. You get your tight ends involved because those are those quicker get the ball out type of passes. You're certainly going to have a game plan and a package for Devontae Smith and, and Jalen Rager. You're going to have a package for all these guys to get them involved. But what I want for my quarterback is three-step, five-step drops. Get the ball out of your hands. I don't want you doing seven-step drops and thinking and going this here to the right, to the left, and the left to the right. I want you to get the ball out of your hands and let these athletes that you've accumulated on the edges, let those guys do the work. That's what I want to do offensively. 60-40, huh? You don't think so. Because well, remember, you know, I, I, the offensive I, I, line is the strength of our offense. I'm, I'm leaning on those guys. I'm making sure that they set their pass early. Let Jason Kelsey, let Lane Johnson, let Brandon Brooks, let those guys lead the way. You got a veteran running back in Miles Sanders. You know, why wouldn't you use them? Or, or are you suggesting that they put the game in the hands of, of uh, you know, Jalen Hurts? I think that would be I a think bad that they might test that early. I don't think that they would go conservative. I think if their offense is going to be an offense that's pass-centric, uh, you know, they won't throw the ball down the field as much, but but I don't know if they're going to go 60-40 run. That's the conventional way to play, this, to kind of save your team early. And I think they're just going to go out and play the offense that they want to play. I don't look at that as being conservative. To me, I look at that as being smart. The Cleveland Browns had a pretty decent offense. And, you know, you think what you want about Baker Mayfield, but they ran the ball an awful lot. They dominated games in the run game, and they used their pass game here and there. I, I, that's what I would think Nick Sirianni would want to do. Um, because Miles Sanders is a, not a big factor in the pass game, we're not going to get a lot of dump offs to him where he's getting you know six, seven catches every single game. So I would I would expect to see uh, K uh, Kenny Gainwell playing a little bit, getting him some reps. Boston Scott, same type of thing. I, I would expect the running backs to play a big part in our passing game. 
and get them involved heavily in our run game. Were you surprised that they kept three running backs? Uh, no. No, but you, you're going to keep three. Just three, I mean. Yeah, I thought that they would have a, a fourth because, remember, Boston Scott – and Gainwell, they're similar in a way where they're more of a scat type of back. And I know Boston Scott has done a very good job of running the ball when we needed him to, but he's not he's not Miles Sanders running the football. Um, I'm, I'm surprised they only kept three. It possibly would have been looking for um, an additional guy if, uh, you know, through waivers or something like that. But I, I think that they want to get Gainwell on the field. They have big plans for them, uh, for, for him. Uh, I know that, and I think – Boston Scott is more of a utility guy that you can use in any situation at any time. 